Um, I like to layer with synths. Uh, so I'll take the guitar part, and it really works when you have something percussive and clean. Um, and then I'll take the exact notes and put them on like goofy ass fucking synths, like shit you hear in um, rage beats and like hyper pop and like video game ass sounds. But like I like to use side chaining plugins where they're linked together and you put them in a group and then you throw like a glue compressor on it. So they're triggering each other. And so you get this like hybrid between the guitar part and the goofy ass synth. And they're playing the same thing. And so depending on which one has the more dominant transient, they'll like overtake. And then, um, but they'll like switch, right? Because it's side chained. So you get this like crazy fucking hybrid. And then when you put it in a group and then throw the glue compressor on it, I mean, it glue compresses it, right? I don't do a whole lot of uh, like making the guitar sound not like a guitar. I mean, yeah, I'll get his guitar I, parts and I'll be like, okay, well, let me do some bullshit to yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get it back and I'm like, fuck. I don't know how I want to play that, but let's party. Dude, I track everything. On, on Archetype Tim Henson, it's worst clean. That's the preset. I track everything. I write everything because if it can sound cool on that tone, which is like the most basic dry tone, it's going to sound fucking sick on anything else. And so that's like, and then once I know that I have something sick, like just from that tone, that's when I get to like, you know, kick back and relax and just like put all the different things on it and just go through all the different presets and, and see what sounds the coolest, you know? I'm kind of a butthole to myself in, in the sense that I do the opposite. I'll, I'll create a new tone that I am not sure I'll be able to recreate on an amp with a different thing. And I'll use them all. I'll use his plugin, the Tim Henson Ar archetype. I still fuck with bias every now and then just to see. Like I like comparing. I'll have like everything kind of linked up and I kind of just track shit and see if something sounds cool. But the big takeaway from doing shit like that is you have to make sure that you're recording everything dry too. Because that way you can just kind of throw it on a plug and you know will sound good if it doesn't. Otherwise you're screwed. You have a wet tone. The cool thing about um, adding a bunch of shit post that like, you know, you don't know you'd be able to recreate like live or like with analog gear or whatever is that we can we can just have somebody make it so yeah <laughs> if there's if there's some crazy plugin that exists that like we're slapping on after the fact and we're like hey we want this real life let's take it out of minecraft and put it irl and so, like somebody will make it for us so you know that's yeah, that's we'll the cool thing now yeah but, but it, back then it was like we didn't have we didn't have anything. No, you, couldn't, like that. you couldn't do that shit. Yeah, you were yeah. just fucked. So basically, when it when it comes to harmonies, Scott and I work in in two different ways. I'm fucking lazy. I'm so <laughs> I'm so lazy. I don't like to track things twice. When I when I track, I'm like, that's it. I'm yeah, like, even oh, if it's a unison, please. if it's a harmony, if it's an octave, I'm not doing it. Um, so I've, the, the two ways that I've found to work around that are to vocode it, um, <laughs> which, is, which is like the, you know, from my plugin, the multi-voicer. What you're able to do with that is MIDI control it so that you can pick a chord progression and it can be as complex or simple as you want, but honestly the more complex ones really go. And so when you vocode a guitar through those big chords, you get really lush, almost like angelic sounding, you know, parts. And so that's what you're hearing at the beginning of Genesis is, is that kind of, you know, vocoded guitar part. The other thing that I do is, um, like if a, if a part needs backing up, what I'll do is copy it into a new lane and then pitch it up and fuck up the formants real hard and then spread it out wide so that the main one is in the middle and then the high octave like chipmunky shitty sounding one with artifacts is like spread to each side 
so that it, it kind of gives you the effect of like backup singers. Um, and so that's what I do. I'm the lazy man. And Scott, on Dude, the other I, hand. <laughs> so on, on this album, I kind of experimented with like controlling it a little more because like, like the most hated and shit, uh, Iconic specifically, I noticed like now that I listen to it, I'm like, you know what? Why didn't I put like a middle one here instead of like the sides? And I had all this shit going on. And I just like stopped at a certain point, it feels like. Like with Reverie, for example, I have like one main line straight smack dab in the middle. And then I have just like harmonies kind of like on the side, bringing it out, you know? And I'll do like thirds, fifths, and octaves. And uh, every now and then there'll be like a fourth that'll work out, but most of the time those are fucked. But when we're doing like a, a verse that I know like, okay, two motherfuckers are gonna have to play this, me and Tim, sometimes uh, I'll kind of like, I'll write one part. That's my fucking main part. So I'll kind of write like a harmony to that with like some unison. So it kind of like goes out and comes back in together and things like that. Yeah, the it's inner, much inner the weaving bulk of, of, it. of harmonies. So. Yeah, hear a lot of those. Steve changed the way that I carry myself. Like, not only has he influenced my playing, but he's influenced my behavior. The first time we met Steve was at NAMM in 2020, and he was the coolest guy ever. Like, he, like when, when he talks to you, he looks at you and he talks to you like you're the only person in the room. You know, literally everybody that I've ever met only who's met him only has amazing things to say about him. And it really made me stop and think like, dude, I'm kind of a shit ass. And I, I, <laughs> I don't, I want to be like Steve. And so, you know, every day I, I try to work towards being less of a shit ass and more like Steve. Um, so yeah, like I often ask myself, what would Steve do? Right? WS. Yeah, WSD. <laughs> um, what would Steve do? Yeah, he's just, he's an incredible role model. He's so, he's very wise, he's very kind, he's very patient. A good yeah, dude all he's around. He's patient, all right. Yeah. We, we fucked up his speakers and he didn't even get mad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. when we were showing him uh, the record and, and then presenting Ego Death to him. You know, oh, we just came from the fucking studio yeah. and mixed it like, with, we were like, hey, bass up. Yeah, and, and there's no... Steve on it yet, right? So like the bass is kind of taking up most of the room in the mix and uh, it just fucked up his speakers. Yeah, the whole grill just fucking... It like fell off. Like yeah. vibrated off. Yeah. And we're sitting there in the room, we're like, this is loud, right? This is really fucking loud. Yeah, because he's got um, like, you know, the he's setup got people-sized for... monitors. Yeah, people-sized monitors, but they're set up so that like you could listen to, I guess, like, Pink Floyd or something like like rock music, really loud and it sounds incredible, right? But then you play anything with 808s in it, and it's gonna fucking just. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. You know what I mean? So yeah, we blew his speakers, and he was really nice about it, and did not make us feel like dickheads. Yes, so it was cool. The story of that is that when he sent it, he said, "This is my gift to you guys. Please do whatever you wish with it." And so we took that as, let's fuck it up. <laughs> and um, Fuck it up as in like chop it yeah, up. Yeah, I chopped it the fuck up and like changed a bunch of notes. Yeah, and... cause like when we send each other guitar parts, we're like, hmm, this is cool. How do we make it not this? You know, like all of our guitar parts like that you've ever heard, uh, they, they've never sounded like that until the very last day before we fucking sent yeah, it Yeah, it's, al it's always an ever-evolving Yeah, they're, they're process. always changing. So we wanted to see how much we could do with it, I yeah. guess. So I, I chopped it up really hard, changed a lot of things, changed things like that were happening under it, changed things that were happening around it. I brought in uh, brass tracks to kind of, I guess, float everything. And then we sent it back to Steve and said, what do you think, man? And he took days to answer. Yeah, we're like, and, fuck, he hates it. And uh, he then came back and was like, oh, wow, I, I guess I was a bit taken aback by how polyphiaized um, it is. And, uh, and then he was like, I, I think it might be better if I just get a writing credit instead of a feature just because, you know, like, I, I don't feel as though I've contributed 
um, enough to warrant a feature, and me and Scott were like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, we, we were worried up. that we offended So him. we fucking wrote the craziest, long, long as fuck email, and it was basically just like, oh. dude, we'll change it back, please. We <laughs> yeah, we basically told him, like, we want everyone to like the song yeah like and, and if, if somebody's not comfortable with it then yeah we don't want to release that. yeah and, and it wasn't like a we didn't want to make him feel like we we're like disrespecting his art or anything and, and it was just more so just like the process of figuring out what it needs to be and then um we sent him that email and he, he came back and was like oh no I, I've, I've been sitting with it and i think everything you did to it was the, exactly the right thing that needed to be done and I, I'm more than happy to, to to give you guys the feature and, and let's do this and so we did it a couple weeks before the record came out Steve was in town on his tour and we went to go play with him in Dallas and we were hanging out in the green room and we were talking and he was like yeah dude I, I really truly believe that like every choice that you guys made to that solo is is exactly what it needed. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Twenty. Yeah, high school for us, dude. Yeah, I was in. I was in tenth grade. He was in eleventh grade, and uh, I, I remember before that, it was just recording, like a, a line in from like the Spider Four. Oh my God. The the half dude. stack. Yeah. And, and that's what I was recording on. Um, and then Scott put me on to Pod Farm and Reaper because before yeah, that... Yeah, my dad put me on to those too. too. Yeah. He was like, check this shit out, dude. Yeah, it was, it was basically Pod Farm and Addictive Drums. And we were making, you know, death God, metal yeah, gen dude. stuff. And it was, it, yeah. it was a great time. Great and you know what? The Pod alive. Farm does kicked ass, dude, for, for what they were. Dude, if you listen to them now, they still kind of kick ass. Yeah, dude. This was around the time that like Periphery was kind of popping off. There was this thing called ask.me or ask.fm. Yeah, and oh my God. you could ask them questions and they'd answer. And I would religiously follow like Misha's ask.fm because he'd, he'd do like really specific questions about gear and shit. And uh, I remember they were like really hyping up the Axe FX. And we wanted one so bad yeah, we found one on like eBay. Yeah, we found one on eBay for bucks. twelve hundred bucks. Uh, an, uh, Axe FX ul Ultra. Yeah, the Ultra. Yeah. All the merch money we had ever made pulled together, plus like any money that we had individually. Yeah. And um, you know, because we're high school kids at this time, and we're like trying to save up twelve hundred dollars to buy this thing on eBay. Yeah, we were like, we went to the bank, and withdrew all every dollar we had, and then the the bid was about to close in like nine minutes, and and we scraped up quarters from each of our cars and, and went to the bank and deposited those so that we could have <laughs> Yeah, they see them. a bunch of kids coming up to the front desk with coins. They're like... Yeah, and that's how we bought our first Axe Effects and we shared that fucking thing. Yeah, because um, uh, fucking Lucas Mann from Rings of Saturn yeah. made a video about how you can use one for two guitars. Yeah. And we were like, dude, we're fucking set! Yeah, and this, then, this is it! I remember we got it. And it was like the holy grail of shit. And it didn't sound as good as Pod Farm. And we just didn't know what the fuck, why not? Yeah, we're like, why? We thought it was supposed to be like, it just made you 10 times better sounding. And yeah, so, we're like, where's the sauce, dude? Yeah, so why we started working with like different people who like might know more about the XFX. Nobody really could get us the sound we were looking for. And then. Then we just discovered like we could just use the fucking presets, bro. And so we just, I know I, I started using <laughs> the presets after that. Dude, it wasn't until after um we started like learning to produce that I like really felt confident in like making a guitar tone because I thought it all had to be done like on the thing. Um and then yeah. after learning sound design or a bit of sound design and then coming back to like guitar tones, it's like wow, this shit is fucking easy compared to like, you know, making this sound like that or, you know, making something that is this sound like something completely different, you know? Yeah. Um, I still struggle with like higher gain shit just because it's, uh, it's touchy, you know? It's yeah. weird to kind of like get one that fits nicely. Yeah. But, you know, pod farm. <laughs> Thank you.
basically in in 2020 when we were working on remember that you will die uh every album i try to like pick up i just try to level up my guitar playing and i was like okay well it's, it's probably time i learned thumping because i wanted to learn it like eight years prior um and i tried and i was just too hard and i said fuck that and you know i had started hanging out with tosin and i was like well i i personally know tosin now so let me just ask him if he'll teach me thumping and so i offered him a thousand dollars for four guitar lessons and he was like sure he showed it to me the first lesson and it was so foreign and then he was like okay yeah try also like if you're like you know not that like well versed with using your fingers try learning these classical pieces and one was la cathedral <laughs> So um, that was the one of the pieces that I had to learn to kind of like just get used to using these other fingers because prior to that we were just hybrid picking, you know. Well, what's, what's no, funny is that we do it. we do it completely different. Like when I watch, I <laughs> so we're we're oh my god, we're we're playing like a bunch of the thumping shit on tour, and I'm like watching us like at pre at rehearsal. And I'm I'm doing it like the way that I learned from Tosin, and then Scott is just doing it like a way that he just taught himself, and it is two, is two completely different ass things, but they're sounding the same. Like if you if you're to just listen, and close your eyes, like it's just like yeah, that sounds right. But then you look, and like our right hands are doing something completely different. I feel I feel like I'm you're sure doing. Sure, mine a, looks dumb as fuck. I too. think you're doing a lot of like he's Scott's getting a lot of the muted notes from yeah, I'll, the left I'll, like, hand. So I guess the way to do it is like, yeah. But I'll go like, I'll like add like a thing. Of course, it sounds like shit right now. Whereas you would probably go like, or some, something. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I try and get all the, like every, oh, with yeah. that. And then Scott will do like, to get that same sound, he'll do like, like he'll hit the left hand. Um, when it gets the same sound, it gets the job done. So it's just, just two different ways of getting to the same oh, destination. There's, there's one, yeah. Of course, it's in drop D, so pr pretend that uh, it's like the right now. I'll go like that. So basically, all I'm doing is that and then coming back down and like punching basically the strings and then plucking it again. I don't know how you do that. Maybe you go, you go like the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just go. With Genesis in, in particular, there's, I guess three producers on that that like really contributed the soul to that to that record <laughs> that idea was started with uh rodney jerkins and if you don't know who that guy is he made say my name by destiny's child and a bunch of other like huge songs um and he like hit me up on instagram in like 2019 and i went to his place and hidden hills and i'd never been there before and i was like wow drake lives here it's fucking crazy. And like I went into his studio, it's like the most insane studio I've ever been in. And uh, I remember him asking me to just play. And like, I'm not the, the type of motherfucker just just plays, you know? And I started playing and I was just playing bullshit for like an hour and he was like, okay. And I was like, fuck, did I blow this? And I was like, wait a second, I gotta show you something. And this was before the, the plugin came out, but I showed him the multi-voicer and he was like yo what the fuck is that but obviously he's super christian so he didn't curse um but uh <laughs> then i stayed like five more hours and we like concocted the main gospel progression of genesis 
And then I was there every day for like two, two more weeks after that doing more of that. But that's how that came about. And, and Rodney, he's an incredible like piano player as well as producer. And so like he's just, he, he picks it up and he's just, the soul just comes through him, right? And the other producers, low file, he's got beautiful, beautiful chords in him. He's got a lot of soul in, in his productions. And then uh, the feature on that song is Brass Tracks. If you're unfamiliar with Brass Tracks, they, he just won Album of the Year, uh, the Grammy for Harry Styles, because he did, he did Watermelon Sugar, um, and then a bunch of other really cool stuffs. But like he's, his chords are also insanely beautiful, and, and the way that he like stacks his horns and the harmonies and everything is very angelic, you know, like the gates of heaven type shit, so. I, Kanye is my number one and will always be. Uh-oh. <laughs> there we go. I, because I'm, I'm the Here type of come. motherfucker that's able to separate the art from the artist. I can see the comments now. <laughs> It doesn't take away from how incredible the art that he made is. He like, fucking made graduation, right? Dude? That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, he, he go say whatever. <laughs> like, it doesn't change the fact that those records are printed on a vinyl that I can put in the record player and it's still the same record. It doesn't change anything. Well, I mean, for what it's worth, I completely agree with you about that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, if you, if you guys want to keep that in there, you got to keep him in there agreeing. <laughs> I can't. I can't just be the only one saying this because you know, like, let's. Uh, yeah, well, let's go in this. Let's go in this together, bro. All right. <laughs> like, Kanye, Kanye forever. <laughs> Us liking his music does not mean that we endorse the things he says. You know what I mean? Like, there's two separate, yeah, two yeah, separate things. Exactly. But yeah, Mike Dean for sure. And that was like a lot of, I remember the first time I heard Mike Dean, or like I knew it was Mike Dean, it was on um, Yeezus. And there's this like crazy guitar harmony thing where they like, it's just super, it's the, it's the Mike Dean sauce, right? And I just thought that was so sick. And I've always wanted to like try and emulate that. And then Lewis Grant, who we have a song with, with, uh, it's called Look But Don't Touch. And he kind of like is in that like emotion heap, Bon Iver world of like singing and with a lot of harmonies. And that's kind of like what inspired the whole, you know, guitar harmony, multi-voicer thing, um, that and the Mike Dean stuff. So yeah, you're, you're totally right with the Mike Dean stuff. <laughs> the flutter. Yeah. yeah, we went fucking crazy with it when we first started doing it. Yeah, I mean, you just... You just smack the bar, that's it. And, dude, when we say smack, like, you can really abuse these things. Don't, don't... If you get one or both of these guitars, don't be afraid, really, just... They can handle it. I realized I don't really need to, like... All right, so, like, Neurotica, for yeah. example, right? Like, that whole thing. I'll kind of just instead of like instead of like bending the note, I'll just I'll hit it like right around here or like on the bridge. I kind of aim like right here, but like without a note, you can kind of hear it's going. That's all you need, you know. So I do that a lot. It's fun. It's fun as shit, too. That's the note you picked? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Bam, bam, bam. That was a different That note. was a good one. That was, I liked the, the first one. You know what I do a lot in practice these days? Is, uh, like, I'll go... Because Clay's doing his bass solo and it fucks him up and it's really funny to me to watch him like get pissed and struggle because he's focused he's in on it he's like get it diddly bad to get it and then I'm just he gets very angry don't get a tattoo of anybody's face 
on your yeah. fucking body. <laughs> dude, I remember when I was 16 years old in high school, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get fucking dime bag tattooed like right here on my shoulder one day, dude. <laughs> Everybody pretty much told me, you should not do that. I don't understand why. And uh, I guess now I do. So thanks, everybody. Imagine post-2022 Kanye face back piece. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> my God, dude.